to uh, resubstantiate my point, uh, Cuba's economy is doing well without us. Cuba has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the world at 5.4 from ages 18 to 24. And Cuba's national debt is only 35% of its GDP, far better than the US or just about any other Western country, which comes from a, a website from the CIA. Um, and and uh, this idea that uh, we're losing a lot of money uh, because of the Cuban, Cuban embargo, again, um, I strongly believe that $2 billion, which is nearly nothing uh, to the US, um, should not be the price for trying to democratize um, and take down the regime, uh, the, the Castro regime. Um, to continue uh, to prove that Cuba's economy is doing well without us, um, the effect of the embargo on Cuba is minimal at best. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce estimates that the embargo costs the U.S. economy $1.2 billion per year in lost in sales and exports, while the Cuban government estimates that the embargo only costs the island itself $685 million annually. Um, pretty low number. Um, some critics argue that the embargo actually helps Fidel uh, and Raul Castro more than it hurts them by providing a scapegoat to blame uh, for all of Cuba's problems. Um, so even taking the uh, opponent's side, um, the economy argument is, uh, that Cuba is, is losing out on money and we're losing out on money, again, the price uh, is, is minimal at best for what we're trying to do in the country. Um, and also, um, going back to that uh, uh, lifting on the, on the planes, uh, millions of Americans going to Cuba equals money, which equals money for the regime. The same regime putting those who are, ex uh, putting those who are expressing their freedom of speech by imprisonment. Uh, if you didn't know Cuba's uh, financial system, it is all run by uh, the regime, the Castro regime. So basically, they have all the commercial trade uh, rights. Um, yeah. Um, so all of that money is going straight to the Castro regime, who, like I said before, is not going to back down. And to reiterate this not backing down from the communist regime, uh, that, the, that, that the Castro regime is going to do. Let me just explain to, to you what, uh, what Raul Castro is doing right now in his uh, presidency. He uh, appointed a guy named Miguel Diaz-Canel, 52-year-old party uh, apart chic factorum. And basically, people think that this guy is going to come into power after Raul um, because of his title. But the actual way that the Cuban uh, government works, the power is still in the, uh, the Castro uh, hands. Um, as we can see, uh, where is it? the military will continue to run the citizens. The succession plot thickens when we consider that constitutionally, the president of the Council of State is also the supreme chief of the revolutionary armed forces. Cuban history offers no tradition of military subordination to civilian rule. With Raul Castro gone, it is difficult to envision old commandants like Romero, Valdez, and three-star generals of the Palat Rioro obediently offering military allegiance and saluting in subordination to a civilian bureaucrat like Diaz-Canal, who is supposedly going to take over. Thank you. Mm-hmm.